Are you an astrophotographer who likes to alter the color of images, looking for that perfect HOO or SHO like combination, or perhaps some other color scheme entirely that might make your images look wonderful? Like I've talked about in my other videos, I prefer to stick with the, the more traditional RGB color scheme because it allows the images to look more like they naturally would to the human eye, but that's my preference. If you prefer a false color format, that's fine. And my guess is that you're always looking for scripts that will allow you to do that in the best way possible. But what if I were to tell you that scripts are child's play, that you can gain fine control of every aspect of your image's color, making astrophotography that is colored perfectly according to your taste, and you can kick all the scripts to the curb? Well, today I'm going to start showing you how to do just that. Now in this video, we're going to start with a simple method and in the next video, we'll switch to the more powerful but slightly more complex method. We're going to start off working with this image. I shot this image last year and put 25 to 30 hours of integration in it using an SCT telescope with a 203 millimeter aperture and shooting under dark Bortle 1.5 skies. This allowed me to pull out a lot more detail than one ordinarily sees from images of the region of the Horsehead Nebula. And by the way, because I know it's going to come up, the light streaks on the left side of the image are not amp glow. I'm using a modern sensor. They are not subject to amp glow. Those light streaks derive from the star on attack, which is just off frame. But I've chosen this image because not only is it one of my favorites among the many that I've ever shot, but it's also very colorful. It gives us a lot of room to illustrate. So if we're going to shift the color of an image to a false color scheme, the first thing that we typically want to do is remove the stars because stars in false color generally look pretty bad. You can use any star removal software that you choose. There's a great star removal tool in Cyril, which is free. However, I have PixInsight and the exterminators, so I'm just going to use the star exterminator in PixInsight. In the star exterminator, make sure that you have large overlap selected. It'll take a little longer to do the star removal, but you'll get better results. And since this image has already been stretched and developed, you want to make sure to select the unscreen stars checkbox. This will give better star removal results with a stretched image. Once the star exterminator has worked its magic, you're going to have a star plate and a starless plate. I'm going to save both of these as lossless tips to work with in my preferred layer-based photo editor, which is Affinity, now Affinity version 3. Which, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is absolutely free now. In Affinity, I'm going to begin by dragging in the starless plate. Once the image has been dragged in, I'm going to duplicate it and then lock the duplicate so that permanent changes cannot be made to it. It'll serve as a proof so that we can go back and reference the colors from time to time. And now for a message from our sponsor, who also happens to be me. Over the years I've been making the Sky Story channel, many persons have asked if I had images for sale. And now I do. Just a couple weeks ago, I created the Sky Story Gallery, and you can find it at the link below. In the gallery, I am slowly adding a selection of the very best of my images, available as 13 by 19 or 13 by 13 images. All prices are noted in Canadian funds, which is just like getting a discount because Canadian currency is about 30% less than American currency. And if you're ordering in North America or the UK, shipping is included. All funds raised go toward the production of the channel and the maintenance of the observatory. Please note, however, that because I live deep in the backwoods, in the Canadian north, and winter is just about to set in, I will not be able to deliver during the winter months as soon as the snow flies. I can still ship now, but sometime between now and late December, the snow is going to fly and it's going to fall deep, and we will literally be locked in till spring. So if you've been planning on placing an order, now is most definitely the time, and there's good odds it could get there for Christmas. All right, let's get back to it. Now I'm going to open the HSL tool, and this tool, all by its little self, is going to allow us to change the color space of the image any way that we want. This tool consists of several major parts. There is the color wheel, which shows us the color scheme we're working with. There are the color range options just below it, which allow us to pick the specific color ranges that we want to work with. There's the hue shift slider bar where we shift our colors, the saturation shift bar where obviously we adjust saturation, and the luminosity shift bar where we adjust the brightness range within a specific color range. 
All right, let's put this incredible tool to work and transform the color scheme of this image. We're going to begin by selecting the leftmost color range option, which will affect all the colors contained within the image. From the zero position on the hue shift bar, we can shift toward the left, skewing colors in a counterclockwise direction. Or we can reset the bar back to zero and then skew to the right, skewing the colors in a clockwise direction. When doing color shifting, you can either watch the total image and try to find what you feel is the best set of altered colors as you go along. And honestly, I like this position right here a lot. It's very color expressive. I transformed the hydrogen and the red curtain behind the horse head into a cerulean blue, and the dark region below has been transformed into a rich complex of warm colors, reds, oranges, and yellows. I'm going to make some slight adjustments to the color scheme and see if I can find a slightly better color balance. Here's pretty good. We still have our blue curtain with a darker region and a warm yellow golden predominant color scheme. Now, personally, right here is where I would stop. For me, this is a perfect alteration. It brings out a beautiful alternative color scheme within the image, and I can further enhance that by bringing out the shadows with other tools and selectively intensifying or reducing the saturation. But that's not our focus for this video. Let's say that I choose to enhance the color some more and in particular, I want to shift the blue of the hydrogen emission curtain behind the horsehead nebula. I can continue to make slight adjustments to the hue shift slider to find the blue that I'm looking for. I'm just going to continue to take my time moving slowly through the entire hue shift range until I find a color scheme that I find to be both striking and somewhat unique. From time to time, I may want to go back to my original image and just reference the original colors to see how the altered version compares. I can easily see the original color range just by going to the HSL layer in the layer stack and clicking off the HSL tool. Now I've settled on what I want to work with. I like the sky blue of the upper region, but let's say I don't care for the gold of the lower region. I want the more color varied red and gold that I had earlier. I can accomplish this on the same HSL tool by selecting the color ranges that I'm going to adjust. So what I want to select is the darker gold region below. But what if I select the gold color on the HSL tool. Watch what happens. When I move the hue shift slider, virtually nothing happens within the image. Why is that? If we turn off the HSL tool, we can see the lower darker region is originally blue with some cyan or cerulean in it. Those are the colors we need to be affecting, not the outcome of the HSL tool. So when I select the blue colors and the cyan colors on the HSL tool, and the move the HSL slider, we can see the changes are made to the image. The tool affects the original colors, not the transformed colors. So working with two variations of colors in the blue range, let's begin making adjustments to the lower, darker region of the image. I'm just going to work with the hue shift bar in both those colors till I get the colors that I want. But notice when I make strong changes, we lose detail within the image. This is the result of saturation clipping. If you push saturation too hard or change it too much, you will lose detail. You can avoid the loss of detail in two ways. You can either frequency separate the image and then operate the HSL tool only on the low frequency component where the color and light is, thus leaving the detail unaffected. Or you can moderate your changes, which may be better because if you push the color too hard, it will be hard for the high frequency information where the detail is to show through the overly pushed color anyway. So what I'm going to do is find the color balance that I want. Then I'm going to work with the luminosity and saturation shift bars and increase the luminosity to brighten up the information in those shadows and bring it out and alter the saturation so that it does not overwhelm the detail within the image. That looks pretty close to what we want. We can compare and contrast with the detail in the original version just by making the HSL tool invisible by clicking on the eye icon on its layer in the layer stack to the middle right. And having used that as a reference, I feel I can bring out a little bit more detail. So I'm going to make a few more changes to the saturation and luminosity of the dark blue and the cyan color ranges. Right about here, this is about perfect, I think. Now let's say that I decide that I want to make more precise changes to the color within the image. 
I can tighten up the spread of the color changes by grabbing the four icons on the color wheel and spreading them out wider so that the color changes affect a wider range of color or bringing them closer to each other to affect a narrower range of color. Notice how, as I widen out the icons of the color range to be affected, the color changes become more spread out. But I feel it's overspread out. I'm actually going to narrow it up because I want to emphasize the color differences down there in that lower, darker area of the image. And then I'll just adjust the position of the icons, which will tell the hue shift as well as the luminosity and saturation shifts exactly where on the color wheel to affect the image. Again, please bear in mind, I'm just creating this image for illustration purposes. I wouldn't actually shift from the original RGB image myself, but if you like false color palettes, this is how you can make any kind of color choice there's no more reason to be restricted by the palette choices presented to you by a script. All right, let's say that I like this, but I want to intensify the blue color overhead. We'll accomplish that using the same methodology. The original color of the region overhead is red. It's the emission of hydrogen. So among the seven color options, I'll select the red color, and I'll start by grabbing the icons on the color wheel and moving them around to find the position that most intensely and best affects the blue color range in the upper region. Then on the hue shift slider bar, I'll make a slight adjustment to the hue, intensifying the color more toward a bright cyan. Then I'll make some final adjustments on the saturation shift and luminosity shift bars, looking for just the right amount of brightness to create drama in there, and just the right amount of saturation to bring out brilliant color without overwhelming color that causes saturation clipping. And here it is. I'll just put the stars back into the image. I'll just open up the folder where I put the stars and drag the star file right onto the image. With the snapping tool activated, the star file will snap into place when I drag it roughly in position. Over on the layer panel, middle right, I'll drag the star layer to the top of the layer stack and then switch the composite mode to screen so that it adds its light to the image. And there we go, the completed image. Using the HS tool, I've altered the palette of each color range of the image. In this palette, using cyan to represent the red hydrogen curtain behind the horse head, and using warm colors, variations of red and yellow, in lieu of the dark blues and cyans in the shadowy area below the emission curtain in the upper half of the image. But the beauty of, and great strength of, using this methodology is I could have chosen any color to represent any other color by shifting with the HSL wheel. You do have to be careful when making those shifts not to make them so strong that they end up saturation clipping the detail or saturation clipping so hard that they end up crushing colors in the region. But that typically can easily be adjusted by modifying the saturation of a shift along with the luminosity. And by using this method, you can get any false color scheme that you want from any image. Bear in mind though that this is not the most advanced method. There is a more fundamental but demanding method we'll take a look at later. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, observations, or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Now, get out there and shoot that amazing sky.